Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I uh, introduce your, uh, yourself first. So, uh, Professor Tuvan Kumasa received BSc and MSc and PhD degree in Control and Automation Engineering from Istanbul Technical University. He is currently an Associate Professor in Control and Automation Engineering Department and Director of Artificial Intelligence and uh, Intelligence System Laboratory, Faculty of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Istanbul Technical University. He has currently authored more than 100 papers in international conference journal and books. His major research interest area um, interest are in computational intelligence, notably type 2 fuzzy logic, fuzzy control, neural network, evolutionary algorithm, and intelligence system. <clears throat> he is also interested in robotics, machine learning, intelligent control, and their real world applications. He has served as a as a publication co-chair panel session co-chair special session co-chair uh, PC, IPC and TPC in various international national conferences. Dr. Kumbasa is an associate editor for the IT transaction on the fuzzy system and an area editor for international general approximate region. Uh, uh, Professor Kumbasa received best paper award from the IEEE International Conference on Fuzzy System in 2015 and 6th International Conference on Control, Engineering and Information Technology in 2018. He was the recipient of ODTU, Mustafa and Arla Research and Educational Foundation Research Incentive Award in 2020 and the Turkish Academy of Science and Outstanding Young Scientist Award in 2021. So I welcome you, sir, for your session in the for introduction to type two fuzzy logic and its application. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much for the nice introduction. I hope this will be a nice session in general. So let me share my screen. Okay, so I think you should be able to see my screen now. Yes, sir. We can. All right, that's great. All right. So. I think I have an hour time to talk about this presentation. So basically what I want to do today is to provide you this kind of overview about, especially on type one and type two fuzzy logic control structures. So uh, highlights of my talk. So basically I will start with the basics of it. So I think this is like the second day of this training. And I think everyone knows up to this time the basic concepts. So in the beginning, I will just briefly describe again the fundamental components of intelligent control systems, talk about type 1 fuzzy logic, about type 2 fuzzy logic, and then I will present this kind of structural classification and then we'll try to answer these kind of, let's say, three naughty questions. Do we need all these kind of type 1 fuzzy control interval, general, all these kind of stuff that we are using nowadays in the fuzzy community. So basically, this is like really primitive stuff. So basic control. So what we all know, I think, is like if you go to the industry, 95% of all applications are PID controllers. And if you go like more specifically to these kind of structures, 90% are PI controllers. So in industry, none of, usually the D part is not even employed. PID really simple to tune. So basically we try to replace these kind of conventional control structures with fuzzy control structures in general control. So when we come to intelligent control, now the fun starts. So a bit history. So the definition of intelligent control, I think has changed a lot during the time. So the first definition is like from 71, presented by Fu in I triple transactions on automatic control. So over there we have this kind of, let's say futuristic a bit definition, uh, really a, a kind of linguistic definition. So it's like the intersection of AI and automatic control. So 71, we have this kind of general definition of intelligent systems. Then in 91, Narenda uh, in IEEE control systems, had provided this kind of, let's say, more formal definition. So now, as you can see, we have this kind of clearly uh, definition of function mode. So we need functions. 
we have these kinds of expectations, and these expectations are defined with respect to the historical area. So learning systems, uh, intelligent systems, I mean, these kinds of, this definition of 91, I think perfectly matches what we should think when we talk about intelligent control. So three main components. Intelligent control system should be capable to make its own decisions. So a rule-based systems, a learning system is always nice. Flexibility, it should be adapt to the conditions. So if you have high level of uncertainties, varying dynamics, nonlinear dynamics, this is another issue that we have to face. And obviously at the end, control systems engineers, we want high accuracy. So without high accuracy, I think autonomy and flexibility is not important. So this is like the huge umbrella that we should cover in general in intelligent control. When we come to the components, two main components. So we need something to learn. And I think nowadays when we say learning, we talk about deep learning, I think, in general. So convert everything to optimization problems, usually in control systems. We have optimization problems in system identification or like indirect or direct adaptation mechanisms. Everything can be online, offline. So this is like a huge area that I just want to briefly summarize. So what I want to talk basically is like the reasoning operation of an intelligent control system. And here obviously come, we come to the topic of fuzzy logic and fuzzy sets. So the idea is like to make decision with imprecise informations, but still useful informations such that we are still capable to make high accuracy uh, decisions with high accuracy. So this is like the ultimate goal in general. So everything is like an if then rules, so just to remind you. So obviously 65 first structure was type one fuzzy logic systems. So here, this is like a generic fuzzy rule, but obviously here we are going to use type one fuzzy sets. There's an if part, a then part, so there is this inference, so we have to choose our product operator, the falsification operator, and so on. So in this talk, I will mainly talk on Takagi Sugeno type ones, because these structures are more widely used, let's say, in real-time control engineering applications. There are also a couple of Mamdani-based uh, fuzzy logic applications, but I think due to the functional representation of the consequent MFS, uh, using Takagi Sugeno ones has this kind of slightly more advantage. Uh, one step further would be like even uh, setting a couple of parameters of the consequent MFs to zero and convert everything to singleton rules. So basically, then we have crisp membership functions defined as the consequence. And I think if you look at the literature from 1980s up to now, uh, if I put aside the fuzzy model based community, I would say like uh, the Takagi Shigeno's simplest structure, the crisp consequent parts are more likely used. So basically uh, the consequent parts are defined with crisp MFs. So in control systems, the huge applications were obviously done in control. Uh, I think the pioneer study was by Wang because he has explicitly shown that Although everything is linguistically represented, it can be seen as a nonlinear controller. So once you can see it as a nonlinear controller, then as you look at the history of fuzzy control, then you will see that all these kinds of mentioned projects regarding stability, robustness have been eliminated because whatever it works for nonlinear control systems, it also works, I think, for fuzzy control systems and type of control systems. So it was a huge advantage on the other side, because here we have linguistic rules. For instance, on the right hand side, you can see a two input, one output controller structure. Later on, we will call this a PD controller. And as you can see here, I can define, for instance, certain interpretations by just looking at the rules. For instance, if the error is zero, the derivative error of the error is zero, basically I should employ a control signal, which is almost zero because I am at my steady state. Thus, although everything is like a nonlinear controller from a general perspective, by just playing with these linguistic rules, I can easily modify the resulting control surface. So here you can see an example. So for different rules, I can modify the control surface. 
Thus, I have this kind of nice, let's say, linguistic tuning approach, which is usually 100% mystery once you come to this kind of fine tuning phase of, if, in the fine tuning phase of fuzzy controllers in general. So, this was pretty nice. So, huge success of Python fuzzy control since the 80s. It was pretty nice. Everything was going really well. But there was this kind of issue because it was employing type 1 fuzzy sets. So in 65, when Zadeh proposed type 1 fuzzy sets, at the end, he, there was this kind of counterclaim that eventually you are mapping a crisp input to a crisp membership function. So there was this kind of wokeness, fuzziness. However, what about uncertainty? Because especially in real-time engineering applications, what we face is like, there is always uncertainty, can be model uncertainty in general. So Zadex response was like around six to seven years later, because eventually he came up with the idea, can we also model our membership grade? So the idea was based on the idea that if I would ask different experts to draw, for instance, the set of small, every expert would draw a different membership function. And if I ask many experts, then I would end up with an infinite number of membership functions because eventually words mean different things to different people. So this was like a computing with words approach. From an engineering perspective, we can think it about like this. So you are doing, for instance, um, let's say trajectory following control. Obviously, with respect to the changing environments, lightning environments, or because the engine is heating up or the cart is heating up, the performance might degrade at different conditions. So thus the corresponding membership function has to also change. So eventually Zade said, okay, let's define an upper and lower membership function. And thus now I can define an uncertain membership point. So this was like a huge success in 75. However, obviously at that time, due to the computational power and so on issues, it was not directly implemented. But the idea was nice, defining an upper and lower membership function and trying to represent all the uncertainty in the area that we are calling like footprint of uncertainty. Later on in 2002, Jerry Mandel, who is also, I think, a speaker in this training, I think two days, so I will not go too much into his topics. So he has this kind of pretty nice definition of this type two for this set. So basically we have a lower membership function and upper membership function, and we have this kind of extra third dimension, which is basically defining how much weight should I put uh, on the uncertainty or from a dis different perspective, how much weight should I put to different experts? Obviously, if I would put equally weight to my uncertainty, then I have this kind of simpler type 2 for the set that we are going to call interval type 2 for the sets. As you can see, the third dimension is completely defined with the same weight, so it's always one. But us on the right hand side of the slides, you will see that the general type 2 for the sets, in that case, not all weights are equal, not all weights are equal to one in others. So this was like a huge thing. Obviously, since we are working in three dimensions, we had this extra inference in our structure. So it was not only diversification, now we have also type reduction and diversification. The rest of the structure looks pretty the same. So still we have rules, inference, so we still have to choose our product, uh, our T-norm operators, our T-norm operators, and so on. Still define them everything with if and then rules. However, now we are using and processing type 2 fuzzy sets. So in the Takagishi genotype, obviously the antecedent part is now defined with either type 2 fuzzy sets or general type 2 fuzzy sets or interval type 2 fuzzy sets, and specifically depending on the definition of the third dimension. And now if we want, we can also define the consequent part, which was like a Takagishi genotype one, a functional representation, also with upper and lower values. So I can define a W lower and a W upper or a Y lower and Y upper function to represent also the consequent part as an interval valued function. Obviously we can also use 
type two fuzzy sets and the Bamdani based structure. However, as I said, from engineering perspective, I think still Takagi Sugeno count type ones are still, let's say, relatively much more easier to implement. And obviously, more importantly, since we have functions, data fitting, curve fitting stuff is pretty much more easier with Takagi Sugeno. Here, huge bottleneck by the type production one. So this was like a huge, I mean, if you look at the papers from the 90s up to 2002, I think every paper starts with the same sentence. The type reduction mechanism is the bottleneck of type two fuzzy logic systems in general, because we are employing the karnik Mendel algorithm, which is an iterative algorithm, and there does that exist a closed form representation. However, I think in starting from 2004 with Don Groifu, so Jerry Mendel's PhD student, uh, there are further simplifications on the type production mechanism and in my own papers and in the papers of Don Groibu, it has been also shown that the type, if the type production iterative algorithm is coded uh, really nicely, or let's say if it's optimized, then the computational complexity is not that high as argued. For instance, I have implemented the Karnik Mendel type production algorithm, for instance, with a sampling time of 0.1 seconds, 0.05 seconds. So obviously here the coding skills are quite important. So although it's an iterative algorithm to solve this optimization problem with a nice implementation of the Karnik Mendel algorithm or its enhancements, like the enhanced Karnik algorithm, enhanced Karnik Mendel algorithm, it is feasible to employ type two fuzzy logic systems in general in real time applications. There are also alternative approaches, approximations based on the first order Tyler series approximation, like the NITAN direct type production and diversification method, or the Benjamin Malek Mandel approach, which basically transform everything to a linear combination of the upper and lower uh, type two fuzzy sets of an internal type two fuzzy logic system. So this was like the background about the inferences. So basically now I want to basically classify everything with respect to uh, the fuzzy controller structure. So I will first present this kind of structural classification. So personally, since PID controllers are widely used, I classify them into two parts, right? Fuzzy PID controllers and fuzzy non-PID controllers, right? So when I say fuzzy non-PID controllers, basically I'm talking about these kind of fuzzy model based controller structures like uh, parallel distributed control structures, inverse fuzzy control structures, uh, all these kinds of functional based, let's say nonlinear control like fuzzy control structures. Because what we know in industry, everyone is using PID, so fuzzy PID could be an alternative and fuzzy PID controllers can be classified again into three parts with respect to their input. So if they are direct action types, they could also fuzzy gain scheduling type, and there is also this kind of hybrid type. So the direct action types could be classified again into three parts, which could be like single input fuzzy logic controllers, two input fuzzy logic or double input fuzzy logic controllers, three input or triple input fuzzy logic controllers. So now I just want to present all these kinds of structures uh, briefly and provide you this kind of overview of this kind of classification. So let's start with the direct action types. So basically we want to replace the PID controller in our conventional control system. So the PID controller is using the error, the derivative of error and the integral of error. So basically in a single input direct action type for the PID controller, Basically, we are defining a single input, single output fuzzy logic controller for each component of our PID controller. So there is a fuzzy inference for the proportional part. There is a fuzzy inference for the derivative part, and there is a fuzzy inference for the integral part. So I have called this structure a one to three mapping because we are basically have to design three fuzzy mappings for the proportional, integral, and derivative parts. There is also this kind of one-to-one -one mapping. Basically, over here, we are just mapping the error signal and then providing it as an input to the PID controller. 
So I will talk also on this structure in the upcoming slides. So the nice thing about these kind of structures, and this is like a single input, single output structure. Basically, it is relatively easier to tune the PID controller, the fuzzy PID controller, and still there does exist this kind of intuition that we have for PID controllers. So the proportional part is still valid, as you can see. The integral part is still valid, and the derivative part is valid. Another structure is the fuzzy PID structure. Before representing the fuzzy PID structure, I will shortly present the fuzzy PD and PI ones. So a fuzzy PD structure uses the same inputs as the PD controller, the error and the change of error. Here, due to the definition of our membership functions, obviously we have input and output scaling factors. The PI controller is basically a fuzzy um, a PD controller, a fuzzy PD controller in the velocity form, because here we have transformed the integral part to the end, to the output of our fuzzy controller. So this is just like a velocity form implementation of a PD controller. You can see it like this. A PID controller is basically a parallel connected one. So a PD parallelly connected to a PI, and we end up with this PI PD dash PI structure. Obviously here we have two fuzzy inferences to be tuned and obviously four input scaling factors and two output scaling factors. Uh, lots of type uh, hyper, uh, lots, lots of tuning parameters and obviously under the assumption that both controllers use the same inference, I can reduce it to a single inference which significantly reduces my input scaling factors from four to two and thus reduces my design complexity. So if you look at the literature and if you, for instance, write in Google fuzzy PID controllers, I think this is like one of the, let's say, standard implementations of a fuzzy PID controller structure. It uses the error and the change of error and tries to generate a PID-like control signal. So you can see this one, Get my pen so you can see over here this like as the PD part of a conventional uh, PID controller and this part is the PI part so basically in between we have our nonlinear mapping so you can see this one as a PI PD serially connected PID controllers obviously we have also this kind of three input direct action type as the PID controllers here the first structure was presented with the error, change of error, and the integral of error. So three input dimensions. So my rule base is now a three by three by three rule base. So it's a three dimensional rule base. Writing rules is also not easy, especially if you have the integral of error. That's why this was also implemented in the velocity form. So the keyword is the velocity form. And if you look at the studies of Ying, Hao Ying, uh, he has handled all these kinds of stuff in the velocity form and tried to generate uh, fuzzy PID controllers that are equivalent to PID controllers and then obviously try to enhance the control structure. However, personally, I don't think it's easy to tune these kind of three input fuzzy PID controller structures because of the three-dimensional rule base factor, right? So for the two input fuzzy PID controller structures, the first primary paper was by Lee and Gatland in 1996, and there is also the paper from Mizimato at almost around the same time. So basically they use these kind of phase plots and transient state responses uh, to generate these kind of symmetric rule bases. So in the original paper of Lee Gutland, everything was defined with respect to this kind of sliding mode approach. However, with Mizimato, I think we have came to this kind of more conventional PID design approach. So using the error and the change of error in order to guarantee that our resulting control surface is symmetric with respect to the origin and the other symmetric axis. Basically, we define certain symmetric axes over here. For instance, here for the nine rule based structure, we have symmetricity around our zeros. And again, for the 25 rule based structures, we have again symmetricity. 
So in the original paper of Nizimato and Lee Gotland, obviously the number of rules is defining the quantization level of our surface. Thus, for with a nine rule based structure, we can only generate, for instance, four main areas, for, so for more main plots, whereas for the 25 rule structure, basically we can define more areas with more precise rules. Obviously, 1960s, when we say about 1960, implementing a 25 rule based fuzzy PID controller was a challenge. So, for a really long time, everyone implemented this kind of nine rule based fuzzy PID control set. Nowadays, obviously, thanks to the computation of power, implementing fuzzy PID controllers composed of 25 rules is also feasible. So the other structure is the fuzzy gain scheduling type uh, PID controller structure. So here we have our conventional PID controller and the coefficients of our PID controller are basically tuned by a fuzzy logic mechanism. Generating rules can be accomplished by linearizing the system at certain operating points, finding the optimal PID parameters, and then defining these rules to switch from one operating point to the next one smoothly, thanks to our rules. The other structure, which is not that widely employed, but I think it has shown, I personally, I've seen some promising results, so I think it's worth to investigate these kind of structures, is this kind of hybrid fuzzy controller structure. So as you can see, I have a fuzzy PID controller parallelly connected to a conventional PID controller. So in the middle, I have also this kind of fuzzy switch. So for instance, with this kind of crisp switch, I can easily switch from a fuzzy PID to a PID controller. However, I can also define here rules and an inference. And then I can define, okay, with respect to certain operating points, I should allow the PID. Uh, I, I should allow the PID. So it looks like I have some issues. Okay. No, I should allow the PID to operate at this point and at other operating points, the fuzzy PID can operate. Or for certain operating points, they should collaboratively work. So basically, this was like a structural classification in general. But basically, I want to talk now is like on two three controller structures. My personal favorite is the single input fuzzy logic control structures. As I underlined, single input, single output control structure, super easy to implement and also pretty efficient. And since we are working in this kind of 1D dimension, they are also easy to design. So let me just show you briefly the mathematical description. So when we talk about a type 1 fuzzy logic system here, the type 1 fuzzy sets are defined with the bold lines over here. As you can see, the membership functions are 50% overlapping, or they are Rospini partitioned, that we also say. So for any crisp input, only two rules will be activated. This is nice. The consequent part are defined with crisp consequence. So since we can guarantee that only two rules are activated, for this single input type 1 fuzzy logic system, I can, for instance, now define the input output mapping in a closed form representation. So, if for a crisp input, it lies between two centers. So, for instance, it lies over here between these two centers or between those two centers. So, CI, the center points, then basically the mapping is an affine linear mapping. <coughs> And if the input lies around the origin, so over here, because C0 is always zero to guarantee that we are symmetric with respect to the origin, then it reduces to a linear mapping. So basically, if you use a single input fuzzy logic controller, it is composed of two main functions. So if, for instance, the error lies between C1 and minus C1, it's always a linear curve. And if it lies outside this region, then it's an affine linear mapping over there. So if there are any questions, feel free to shout out. <clears throat> when it comes to the single input interval type two fuzzy logic system, as you can see now, I have type two fuzzy sets. 
However, the nice thing is that even for these ones, I can always again guarantee that that at most two loops will be activated. So this property is pretty important because the conic Mandel type reduction algorithm depends on the row size. And in now, since we guarantee that thanks to our partitioning of our ancestor membership functions, then I can guarantee that, that at most two rules will be activated. And here we have this kind of switching point. And since n is always equal to two, the switching point must be the switching point must be always. Okay, the switching point must be always equal to one. So for the right hand side, the switching point must be always equal to one. For the left hand side, the switching point must be equal to one. Thus, I can now represent the whole fuzzy mapping that processes uses type two fuzzy sets and uses the Kanek Mandel type reduction algorithm uh, in its center of set calculation methods, I can now represent it in a closed form representation. So obviously, unlike the type one, now, although it looks like I have this kind of affine mapping, if you look at the gain and the bias, now the gain and the bias are a function of my input. So basically, I have this kind of nonlinear mapping now in that case. So it's affine if I would assume that my input with respect to my input, However, if I look at my G, if I look at my bias values, it is not anymore just an affine mapping. It is an affine nonlinear mapping where the gain and bias parameters are changing with respect to our input value. So this was like a generic case. So between two centers again. So around zero again, this simplifies again. Because then over here, then it is just the bias term reduces to zero. And then I have this just nonlinear gain. So in my 2016 paper in TFS, I have analyzed these kind of different single input fuzzy logic control structures from the from stability and how to design them. Uh, for both structures, I have presented these kind of systematic, let's say, design guidelines on how to generate certain structures. And for instance, for a three rule type one fuzzy logic control structure, we can generate different type of fuzzy control curves. For instance, let me find this one, for instance, over here. If you look at the black one over here, this is always a smooth control curve in comparison to the unit control curve. So which is basically a conventional P controller or an I controller or a D controller. So I can always generate aggressive control curves or smooth control curves for a three row based structure. More importantly, I can also generate these kinds of interesting structure, which we call like inverse S shaped control curves. So the inverse S shaped control curve is an aggressive control curve if the error is close to zero, whereas it is a smooth control curve when the error is large. But these kinds of control curves are quite useful, especially if you have time delay. Because in the beginning, you don't want to push the system a lot. So you don't want to generate high amount of control signals. You want to wait a bit. Thus, the S inverse S type one works pretty nice, especially for time delay systems. Obviously, depends a lot on the system dynamics. So these are like general design guidelines. Obviously, if you look at these ones for the three rule based structures, it is always a must that the type one always generates a linear control curve. So the brown ones are always the type ones. So as you can see, since around zero for a three rule based structure, we reduce to a linear mapping, it's always a linear one. Once you move to the five rule based structures, then we can also see the affine linear property of single input type one fuzzy controllers. However, on this side, now the type two with the extra degree of freedom provided by the footprint of uncertainty, we can generate again these kind of smooth, aggressive uh, control curves. And more importantly, for a certain setting, for instance, over here, we can now generate also the famous S shaped control curve. So, as I said in my 2016 paper, I presented these kind of design guidelines. 
since we have also this kind of closed form representation, the stability of the overall closed loop system can be also shown. At that time, I just I think I show it with the Kalman Popov, yeah, with the Popov criteria. But later on, the Lyapunov based approaches have been also extended for a single input classification. So the structure was pretty easy, simple to use. And our first engineering application was basically a video game. So you might know this kind of game. So video games are widely employed in testing AI algorithms. So at that time with Atakan and Efean, we have handled Flappy Bird. So this is like an Android game that you have in my plate. So extracted reference signals and then designed this kind of single input, single output fuzzy logic control structure. So it worked pretty nice in a video game. Then with researchers from Nanyang University, we implemented the same controller structure, obviously with a bit fine tuning through the helicopter control of it, to a tree of helicopter control system under disturbances and so on. Then we continued our study with them, extended these kind of single input, single output structures to generate control surfaces, to analyze control surfaces in that study and employed it to this kind of trajectory following of, uh, to solve this kind of trajectory following control of a UAP. So these are like the, let's say, major uh, breakthroughs of these kind of single input type two fuzzy logic control structures that I presented in 2016. Meanwhile, I have also presented this kind of extra tuning mechanisms for these kind of single input fuzzy logic systems. So obviously the simplest one was the gradient descent based approach. But if I am not wrong, there are also some studies where the deep learning based approaches are employed nowadays for single input structures or neural network based approaches are employed to tune these ones. The other structure that I want to talk about are the double input or the two input fuzzy logic control structures. So in the general perspective, since now I have two inputs, one output, I have this kind of three dimensional control surface. And obviously it's not that easy in comparison to the single input one. However, from a rule structure base, uh, there are pretty nice papers as I underlined from Lee, Gatland, Mizimato, uh, Hao Ying, uh, Mohan. So they did this kind of pretty nice analytic derivations for these ones. For the type two structures, <coughs> again, Bejen, Mohan, uh, Melek, Jerry Mandel, Hani Hagra stated a couple of stuff, but Dong uh, uh, uh, they did kind of pretty nice analysis on how to analyze the input output mapping. Personally, I have also worked on this one a lot. However, in comparison to a type 1 fuzzy logic controller, a double input type 1 fuzzy logic controller, which is like generally shown like this. So here, for instance, if we don't assume 50% overlapping, we have a couple of design parameters to be tuned. We have here, I think, if I'm not counting wrong, five, six, seven parameters on that side for an input. For another input, if you have two inputs, 14 parameters over here. And if you prefer consequent MFs, then we have around 19 to 20 design parameters. So even for the type one case, usually we prefer here to spinny partitions of 50% overlapping ones that I've shown in my previous slide. And these ones are usually fixed to 0, 0.8 or 0.5 and 1, and it's symmetric versions. However, when it comes to the double input ones, we have obviously more design parameters, so we have the same number of design parameters of the type one. And then depending on how you generate type two fuzzy logic controllers, you have extra design parameters. So in the single input and then this structure, personally, I have always seen that playing with the height of the lower MF is always a nice and efficient way to tune the type two fuzzy logic controller based on a baseline type one fuzzy logic controller structure. So in the single input structures and in the double input structures, what I have always suggested is construct your type one fuzzy logic controller first, the membership functions of your type one fuzzy sets, 
should be defined as your upper membership functions. And then just by playing with the height of the lower MF, try to generate a full content of uncertainty and obviously try to enhance the performance. The rule base and everything should be directly set to the type 1 fuzzy controller part. Obviously, if you want for the type 2 fuzzy logic controllers, you can also handle these ones as extra design parameters. But eventually, we don't want to increase the com uh, design complexity of our control. So, in a type 1 controller structure, we have also four scaling parameters to be defined. So, Duan in 2008 presented this kind of pretty nice approach about internal model control scheme, or as I've done in 2014, you can handle everything as an optimization. So, if you are using and processing type 2 fuzzy logic systems, uh, type 2 fuzzy sets and defining fuzzy controllers, then it is not that easy to define an input output language. So, usually analyzing these kind of input output mappings. Uh, so, there is a question, I think. So, I cannot see exactly my chat screen. Sorry. So, So I think no, so. first question is what is gain scheduling, sir? Sorry. Uh, the first question asked by uh, one of the participants is what is gate gain scheduling? Uh, gain scheduling. Okay. So let me go back. Ooh. That was pretty before, I think. Okay. Some time. All right, so gain scheduling is like you have a PID controller. Okay. This is like our conventional PID controller. It has three gains, KP, KI, and KT. Usually we are using pole placement, root locus design, or the Ziegler Nichols approach, the coin Kuhn approach to set these ones. However, in setting these ones, we need a linear model. And if we have a nonlinear model, basically we realize this linear model around an operating point and find the optimal or let's say suboptimal KP, KI, and KD coefficients. Then for a different operating point, you can repeat the same procedure. And then for a different operating point, you can repeat the same procedure. And then you have this kind of set of solutions of PID gains. And by using this kind of set of solutions, by looking at the operating points, which could be defined by the steady state values, by your reference signals, or if you want to also take account the transient state dynamics, then you have to also take the error signal. You can basically tune the proportional, the interval, and the derivative gain with the fuzzy logic reasoning mechanism. Okay? So uh, there are pretty much, uh, I think there are lots of studies concerning these kind of fuzzy gain scheduling structures, because eventually we are all, uh, we are basically modifying a PID controller. And from a control engineering perspective, you can see these ones as pretty nice interpolation mechanisms. So for different operating points, basically we are interpolating the proportional integral and derivative gains. However, the fuzzy inference, basically we have rules to provide these kinds of interpolation. Okay. I hope I could answer the question. So, if you have any further question, just, I mean, if possible, just unmute yourself and just scream out. Because as I said, I cannot actively follow my chat screen because this kind of WebEx structure that I have. Uh, to answer another question is why CN value of Y part is always one type two in type two? It is written in chat. In type two, which values? CN value, CN. Uh, yes, CN value. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you mean this one, plus one. So, usually, uh, this is also something that, that I prefer. So, usually, I prefer to work in this kind of normalized universe of this course. And then by defining, let me go back, then by defining input scaling factors and output scaling factors, I have this kind of extra degree of freedom because these are like extra gain values for us. And then I can just design everything in a universe of this course defined in this kind of unit uh, environment. So between minus one and one. Easy 
to define the rules. And if I want to, for instance, as I've shown in the videos, for instance, we define it to let me come back over here very quickly. So this one is composed of three rules over here. So constructed three rules here we had also input output scaling factors. Then basically for this example, we use the same three rules and we had to just modify the input output scaling factors. And then for this one, we have again used these three to five rules defined at this point of unit universe of discourse. And then that again, by just playing with the scaling factors, we were capable to deploy directly the same fuzzy infrastructure for different systems. So this is always nice to work between this kind of interval between minus one and one. So it's also, I think this is a, a habit that I have from my machine learning approaches about these kinds of normalization, standardization approaches. Because working in this kind of minus one, one environment, it's personally for me much more convenient. And if it comes for applications, I can easily use the same fuzzy inference for different systems. I have to just retune, fine tune my input and output scale. Right? So let me move on a bit because I think I have around 12 minutes. All right. So yeah, with the double input one, usually what we do is this, uh, usually what we do is this kind of numeric analysis. So we perform simulations, try to analyze the differences between our control surfaces. So either we analyze everything with respect to its type one counterpart or with respect to its conventional counterpart. So with MATLAB, these kinds of simulation environments, we are generating heat maps. And then by looking at these heat maps, we try to convince ourselves, okay, if I play with this full parameter, uh, then the aggressiveness around a certain region increases, whereas the aggressiveness around a different region decreases. There are also some Analytical approaches. Uh, if you look at the literature, mostly they are for for four rule based double input fuzzy logic control structures. We have also personally worked for higher rule based structures. Over there, in 2014, uh, we came up with this kind of boundary function representation. So try to represent the left and right switching points of the kinetic bandle algorithms with two boundary or three boundary or four boundary functions. Once we have these kinds of boundary functions, then we could guarantee that inside this boundary, only this control action will be active. Thus, I can define this kind of now piecewise closed form representations. So for instance, by defining my boundaries, I could now define explicitly the boundaries where my control surface is always aggressive with respect to its type one counterpart or smooth with respect to its type one counterpart or visa versa. So this kind of boundary function representation was pretty useful for us because the first thing was like we got rid of this kind of iterative nature of the kanik mendel algorithms. Secondly, for this kind of two input one output structures, I can now also define how much the boundaries of these regions. So I can define, okay, how aggressive should be my controller and how wide should it be in general. Obviously, if you are curious about the resulting control actions, they look nasty. So we have this kind of really complex ones. Uh, it's not easy to comment on the resulting control actions. Uh, as you can see here, for instance, in this example, we have three active control signals for different switching points, which are activated with different boundary functions. Analyzing these kinds of control signals is not easy in general, so we didn't end up with this kind of pretty nice PID-like, let's say, representation. Usually, we have these kinds of complex representations, not easy to analyze. We have done a couple of primary studies on these ones. Uh, there are under certain, let's say, constraints on the inference or center of sets calculation methods. It could be like simplified, however, simplifications means you are getting rid of some extra degree of freedom, so degradation of the performance. 
So what we found really useful is that using these kinds of mathematical closed form representations to design self-tuning mechanisms. And thus we came up with this kind of really simple structure by using the derivative information of these ones, right? So since I'm running a bit of time here, I, I will just briefly show you a couple of applications that we have done with the true input structure. So for instance, in the trajectory tracking control, this was like an optimized type one plus PID controller versus an optimized PID type one and the self-tuning type one plus PID controller. And the optimized type two fuzzy controller was usually outperforming these ones. We also implemented like almost all self-tuning fuzzy control structures, type one fuzzy control structures and compared it with a type two fuzzy controller. Here we had this kind of training reference trajectory. So at this training trajectory, the parameters of all controllers were fine-tuned and tuned, and then we tested them on different operating modes. Right? So if you want, you can check the papers for details. Finally, I want to talk about general type two fuzzy logic controllers a bit. So here the main challenge was we have 3D membership functions. If you look at the literature, there are two different representation approaches. The first approach is the Z slices approach proposed in 2002, uh, I think 2006, 2005 by Christian Wagner and Hani Habras. At the same time, Jerry Mandel also proposed this kind of alpha cut based approach. So for instance, here on the left hand side, you can see the Z slice representation and on the right hand side, you can see the alpha plane representation. Later on in 2012, uh, Jerry Mandel has obviously shown that both representation, although they are mathematically looking different, eventually they are mathematically equivalent. So whatever you can do with the alpha plane representation, you can also do with the Z size representation and so on. So personally, I also work on both representations, but also with the two guys. So I work with Hani Atlas with the Z size representations and quite recently with Jerry Mandel with the alpha plane representations. So I just want to give you now this kind of brief overview of what's going on. So with the alpha plane representation, basically we have these kind of, kind of Lego blocks like representations. So we have Z levels over here and the Z plane representation. Now we have this kind of alpha levels. So even if you look at this kind of uh, plots, it looks almost identical. Okay, so there is no huge difference in the eventual representation. However, if you come to the math, uh, their influence is slightly different, but since the representation is the same, mathematically they are equivalent. So the nice thing that we have done with Tani and Jerry was like to investigate the extra degree of freedom provided by these 3D membership functions. We came up with this kind of uh, again, design guidelines, design approaches, either using this kind of Z sciences based approach or this kind of alpha plane approach. And then we tried to provide this kind of interpretable design parameters. So instead of providing interpretation to the fuzzy rules, fuzzy surfaces, we try to provide interpretation to the design parameter. So what's the effect of a certain design parameter? Eventually in both studies, we came up with this kind of two main design parameters. So we have a shape design parameters, which is shaping the resulting control surface. And then we have a sensitive design parameter, which is basically shaping how much sensitive should my, should be, should my mapping be with respect to a certain input. So in both structures, we employed everything in real-time applications. With Honey Agras, we employed everything into this kind of mobile robot. With Jerry Mandel, that the study we have focused on, we implemented everything to this kind of UAV structure. So it's like a parrot member mini drone structure that we have in our lab. So this is like a brief overview about general fuzzy logic controllers, double input fuzzy logic controllers, single input fuzzy logic controllers. My personal favorite is always single input because of the simple nature and efficiency. Final words, uh, whenever I make these kinds of, let's say, presentations, I always try to cite uh, Professor Lüben. So I was teaching at a long time ago, process control in our department. 
and all that Professor Lieberman is like this kind of big guy, so you can think about him like Isaac Asimov of process control. So he stated in one of his talks like these kind of three laws of process control. So the best control system is the simplest one. So in general, if the PID works pretty nice, don't go for a type one, type two, or general. If you need fuzzy controllers, try the single input. If you are satisfactory with this one, then you can move to the double input one at adaptation mechanisms and so on. Although we say that everything is like model three, basically we have to understand the process. So the UAV dynamics are not equal to the dynamics of a, a mobile robot or a UGV. So we have to this one. And eventually, in order to tune all this stuff, we need a model that has a some kind of fidelity. So we have to get these kinds of models. Otherwise, we end up with this kind of Maslow law. So eventually, if you think that type one fuzzy logic controllers or type two fuzzy logic control is going to solve all problems that you are going to face, then basically you will always have this kind of nail problem. You will think that everything is a nail and you have this kind of fuzzy controller as a hammer and try to bam and fix everything. This was also stated by Ludwig Zadem, so rest in peace. So he stated also in his talks, this is, I think, a Chinese people that when the only tool you have is a hammer, all your problems look like a nail. Okay. So that's it that I want to talk about. So I think I managed to compute everything in 59 minutes. So I think we have a couple of minutes for question and answers. So I think if I get rid of my presentation, if I can see all of you much more easily. All right. So, uh, sir, uh, sir, one question from the chat box is, in single input fuzzy PIT, all the gains are function of error only? Is it a drawback? Question mark. Uh, so, let me open the chat now. Okay, for the all the game rings of the error value, so let me go over that again. So, single input, my favorite ones. And so so I think we are talking about the block diagram, okay, about this one. Uh, are all the gains are a function of the error only? Oh, right, yeah, so this is like a mapping that I would call a one-to-one -one mapping, okay? So we are basically mapping the error signal to this kind of fuzzy error signal. However, if you want, as I have stated over here in the general structure, come over there really quickly, all right, so this one. So if you want, you can map, for instance, the error over here. You can also map the error that is going to be processed by the integral, so the change of uh, the integral of the error or the derivative of error. So usually we don't want to feed into the integral of the error or the change of the error to a fuzzy inference and a single input one, because then defining this kind of input output scaling factors is much more challenging. So this is again a trick that we do in implementing single input fuzzy logic controllers. So it's a nice question. Uh, so another question, I think, how to use your interval type two fuzzy model. So I think you mean the MATLAB functions that I have shared a couple of years ago. Uh, Ravi, I think you are talking about these ones or I think so. So, uh, right now, unfortunately, the user interface is down. So, uh, because with the new MATLAB versions, we have these kinds of compatibility issues. Uh, I also talked with people from the MAT groups. Uh, they also kindly offered their help. So, right now, we are trying to, let's say, design a new inference for our type 2 fuzzy logic toolbox that we have shared open sourcely. Hopefully it will be soon online, but meanwhile, I also have seen that the MATLAB people are also started to implement or providing support to type two fuzzy logic systems. 
So either you can use the one from MATLAB directly, or you can use our open source codes. So although we don't have an inference right now, so we don't have a GUI, let's say, all the functions are open source. So membership function implementations, all these kinds of different type production algorithms that I shared with you. I think we are supporting around nine to 10 different type production algorithms. More importantly, if you have this kind of crazy idea of coming up a different type production algorithm, we also support custom type production algorithms as long as the input output mapping of your function matches to our toolbox. I think this is like the question that Ravi asked. So soon we will provide a new GUI, but don't ask me then. All right? So it takes more time to test all these kinds of user interfaces in different computer environments, especially if you are using, I think, uh, Apple stuff, right? So in Apple, it's not always working nicely. So we are having struggles to provide support for Apple products. All right, I think so, Ravi, that this one, or so any other questions from the chat? Let me double check. Uh, provide feedback links, so, I'm not sure what so one of the question is how to implement type two FLC in MATLAB. Another question. Oh, okay, so this is like uh, I think I answered this like a, in my previous one. So I think starting with 2019B, MATLAB is supporting type two fuzzy logic systems. So in the fuzzy logic toolbox, this is option number one. Or in the community page, you can find our open source type two fuzzy logic toolbox. However, as I stated right now, we do not support a user interface. So everything is like codes over there. However, there are some nice examples. So if you just press F5, uh, then you can easily run the codes and then just modify the FIS files of a type two fuzzy inference. You can, for instance, easily implement your two input, three input uh, fuzzy control structure. There is also a simulink example that also works pretty nicely. So we have also similar diagrams for MATLAB similar. So one of the question from my side, why the no, single yeah. input is uh, famous for you? Why you aren't? Yeah, so the single input is like, so with these kind of two input and three input structures. So this is like my personal claim, I mean. So with these kind of two input, three input structures, fuzzy gain schedule structures, Basically, we have to always analyze at least a two dimensional or a three dimensional control surface. However, when you come to single input stuff, basically, we don't have control surfaces, we have control curves. And for instance, if you think about these kind of control curves, for instance, by just looking at the tangent line, I can look how much I can calculate the angle, so the arrival angle around zero. And if the arrival angle is smaller than, for instance, 45 degrees, then I can say, okay, with respect to a unit mapping, I'm always smooth. I can look at my departure angle over here and also comment how aggressive or smooth I am around a certain point. So by just using this kind of tangent information, which I like a lot, I can easily fine tune, okay, let's make it more aggressive. So in the paper, I provided these kind of uh, design rules, when to make it aggressive, when to make it smooth, when to make it an inverse S shape, when to make it an S shape curve, by just using this kind of angle information. So by just looking at these gain values, okay, is there intersection? Okay, in this interval, I'm always aggressive. So if you want, you can also play with this interval it, once you move this kind of five rule based structure by playing with one of the consequent antecedent parameters. So obviously it's simple, but what I have seen, it's like, although it's not like sophisticated as like the two input and three input one, thanks to it's like easy in tuners, it's also quite efficient in real time applications. Okay? Because for two input or three input structures, all the design parameters, as I have shown, they are really coupled to each other. So it's not easy to provide this kind of interpretation or do this kind of fine tuning with two input or three input structures. So usually we prefer like optimization based approaches or derivative based approaches. Nice question, but I mean, I mean, I don't know, but 
uh, I really, I'm really a fanning single input fuzzy logic control structures for a really long time. Uh, even with the type one, I think we have seen pretty nice results. Uh, quite recently, we implemented for instance these kind of single input fuzzy logic controllers for aggressive maneuvering of UAV control systems. And right now, they are implementing everything to solve the autonomous vehicle control problem in real time. Thank you, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, one one more from my side. So, oh, yeah. Yes. Sir. So, in these day, I, I have seen people are following behind the deep learning and machine learning. So, what is the role of fuzzy in that application? Can we hybridize well, both the things? Yeah. So, this is a pretty nice question. So, I'm asking this question for a really long time myself. And also, we have this kind of discussion in our first community. So, personally, right now, I'm almost about to conclude a project regarding this one. So, the fusing of deep learning and fuzzy logic systems. So, our research question is how and why to fuse deep learning with fuzzy logic systems. So, basically, up to this point, we have seen that there is lots of benefit from the deep learning side to the fuzzy community. So obviously handling modeling big data is nice. We have also, for instance, published a paper where we use this kind of knowledge or knowledge distillation to enhance the learning, uh, which is also pretty nice. On the other side, we have also, for instance, tried to provide some linguistic interpretation to this kind of classification mechanisms. So I think the main benefit of the fuzzy community to the deep learning community would be like this kind of interpretation. So can we use these kind of rule-based structures to provide interpretation? Quite recently, Jerry Mandel, he published this kind of nice paper. He might talk about this one, I'm not sure, about critical thinking. Uh, the idea was pretty nice about, okay, Maybe I cannot provide a um, direct interpretation, but can I provide this kind of critical thinking? So what was like the main factors to make my decision? So this is like a huge thing still going on. Uh, for instance, this kind of single input fuzzy logic control structure, as I said, I am a huge fan of these ones. We implemented, for instance, these ones also as activation functions. Because if you look at these kind of mappings, uh, you can also see, for instance, this kind of ReLU, ELU, PreLU, so exponential Leachy uh, activation functions. So you can also define these kinds of activation functions. And then we have, for instance, quite recently shown that by implementing these kind of single input fuzzy logic controllers, which I propose as a control structure, if you implement it also as an activation function, you can also enhance uh, the learning performance of a deep learning model. Which was also pretty nice. Great, sir. You have given the hint to us also. <laughs> no, I mean, as I said, this is like a huge uh, area right now deep learning, big data. So, where is the place of fuzzy logic in AI? Are we an outsider? How can we push more forward? But I think there are pretty nice applications of fuzzy logic systems, especially uh, from the image processing side. So I think in the image processing side, using fuzzy sets and systems as filters, I mean, over there is a huge benefit. Uh, so there's a question, I think, yes, we have worked on this control surfaces and we have implemented some using that what is referred in the paper, but we have also not changed this and we also keep it equal. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so with, as I said always, playing scaling factors is much more easy in general. So we just keep, want to keep the rules, the membership, the consequent MFs fixed. But it's a plug and play. So you can use the same rules for a UAV drone, I don't know, mobile robot by just fine tuning your scaling factors. Okay, so I hope this was an informative lecture. So I try to squeeze everything in one hour. Uh, you know, I think there is another lecture right after me, right? Yes, sir. I will again discuss about type two only. <laughs> okay. Okay.
so uh, uh, sir this is academic uh, type of questions so any um, uh, if we, anyone want to apply for post dog under you what are the procedure yeah i mean uh, for postdoc positions uh, or phd positions i mean here uh, i mean i'm receiving these emails so in turkey it works like this we have this kind of general admission admission system so in that case i'm completely out of the loop Okay. So we have this kind of community and this community decides whether you are accepted to master's PhD and so on. So I can only get involved once you are accepted to the master's and PhD. So unlike in Europe, it is not like whatever I say, it is like, first of all, the commission has to say, okay, you are accepted. And then we can start talking about doing a master's and PhD. Otherwise, so what about, so what about postdoc? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. With post of the university has some opportunities, so providing some certain amount of funding. And besides, we have TÜBİTAK, which is like the Turkish NSF. You can think it like this, or our Turkish Science Foundation Corps. They are also providing some opportunities. And besides, if I have an ongoing project, there is also a possibility to join this ongoing project as a postdoc. But uh, I am about to conclude now my projects. <laughs> so 1st of January is my deadline. <laughs> so I have to write, write a couple of closing reports and hopefully I will have new projects, I think at March or April. So I'm, nowadays I'm just writing up. So just like a PhD student, old school, closing everything, LaTeX word, just writing closing reports nowadays. So. Hopefully March and April, there will be new projects. So if you are interested in all this stuff, integrating fuzzy logic systems with deep learning, autonomous systems, mobile robots, feel free to send me an email uh, alongside with your uh, CV, publications and so on. And if we can arrange, we can arrange a postdoc or a PhD. Always never forget, I have limited amount of budget so limited amount of slots. So no harm feelings if you couldn't make it and so on. Okay. Great, sir. Yeah. All right. So if any questions from the participant, please ask. Otherwise, uh... Sir, uh, one submission from my side in my oh, PhD yeah. duration, you have helped me a lot through the mails, if you remember. Oh. <laughs> and your okay. toolbox is also helped me a lot while I'm doing oh, yeah. type two. Oh, yeah. that's great to hear. That was the whole idea, I mean, because just putting out this kind of open source toolbox. But as I said, unfortunately, the user interface, I think it's not working anymore after. 2019B, because this is the feedback that we have received. So it only works in old method versions, I think, nowadays, because method is changing, improving the overall structure all the time. So I just want to give all stuff to method and let them deal with this kind of maintenance. So Jerry Mandel warned me about this one keeping maintaining toolboxes is difficult, especially if it's not your full day job. But it's always nice to hear that the toolbox works for you or other researchers, uh, because it looks like the fuzzy logic toolbox of MATLAB easy to use and easy to implement. So really happy to hear that the toolbox helps someone in the academia. So you made my day. I think it is working uh, in 2014, 15, 16, 19, uh, before yeah. 19, right? Yeah, before 19. I think it's working over there. Okay, okay. Because I, I have used a few things uh, in in few paper right now, so that's why I thought. Oh yeah, nice to hear. Cool. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful talk, Hi. and you have covered Hi. almost uh, all the uh, PID, fuzzy PID, and single input, two input, three input, and I also I think uh, I have read all the your papers uh, while doing PhD. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks again for the invitation. I hope uh, it was an informative one, and I hope after this presentation we will have more single input fuzzy logic control. Research. Yes, <laughs> and I will try. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I hope you will have a nice training seminar continuing on. Uh, yes. The presentation looks pretty nice, all the people. So personally from the fuzzy community, I would like to thank you that you are organizing this kind of pure fuzzy control training session. All right, thank you very much for that. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. All right. So let me check this one. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Have a nice day. See you. No, nice. All right. Bye. So, uh, if you have any, uh, I think few people are asking about the toolboxes. So, if you're interested, I can show from where you can download it, download it and where you can use it. And uh, uh, and I will also cover some type two structure, uh, not exactly structure, uh, the basic things. It uh, it will be required because um, uh, Professor Mendel told me that you have to cover this portion um, uh, before his session. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, everyone can you can hear me? Voice is clear now. Yes, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I can show you how to install that toolbox in MATLAB. Uh, that is uh, Tufan uh, sir. Uh, uh, the toolbox is made by Tufan sir. Okay. I think you see my screen now, right? Okay. So if you simply write interval type uh, type two fuzzy logic toolbox, it is available in MATLAB. And from here you can download it, but uh, as per Tufan uh, sir discussed that it is not working in uh, after 2019 B, right? Because it is created in 2014 and uh, later on sections, later on MATLAB, right? So, but if you have older version, you can use it. Uh, still, uh, we are using uh, that particular toolbox, but I most of the time I used in uh, in form of uh, uh, the coding uh, kind of form, right? So it is very easy to implement if you understand the type one toolbox and it's a mathematical R, it's a coding part. It is very easy for you to understand type two also, right? So <clears throat> these are the toolbox. You can simply uh, download it from this particular site. And this is uh, available in MathWorks, right? Also, you can uh, see this. This is the Tufan sir uh, page. Everything is available here, right? So I think, uh, okay. So toolbox section is also here. You can see type two fuzzy file your system with your open source MATLAB single team toolbox. So when I am working as a PhD student in 2012, 13, right? At that time it is working properly. It's still working for the older version, okay? So any doubt regarding toolbox, if you have, you can ask me directly uh, here only. Otherwise we'll go for the my slide. Please unmute yourself and screen is visible to me, uh, you, everyone? Yes, sir. Are there any open source simulator for FLC? Yes, open. Uh, I don't know about simulator, but MATLAB has fuzzy logic toolbox inbuilt in it. You can use it very easily, right? And uh, type two also you can use it, but uh, as he said, it will be. Uh, it is working before 2019 B, right? So right now I install 2021B, right? So it is not working. So I thought that maybe it has uh, some problem with my PC, but I don't know exactly that it, it is not working after 2019B. In this session only I got to know. Okay, Hello, okay I hope, sir, yes, I have please. A sir, 2018, uh, matter of 2018, it will support, sir? Yeah, it will support. Okay, I'll try to do it, sir, but I could not able to do it. Uh, is there any procedure explained in the, sir, explained here, in the web page? 
okay i can uh, i can show you right in my matlab here uh, this is uh, 2020b so it is not working here properly but i can show you the uh, that uh, uh, graphical user interface right but it is not working properly that is that the sorry also uh, telling about the same thing right i can explain because this is 2000 uh, in my uh, personal computer uh, it is uh, 2040 it is working there and i am still working on it if anyone interested to uh, interested in working with me related to type 2 they can uh, welcome everyone is welcome on that area and right so just wait when here you can see that it is 2020b right so i can show you um, how the toolbox can be downloaded and can be used so simply write type uh, fuzzy type 2 then it, uh, because this matlab has installed type 2 if you have not installed it will not work simple right so you can write fuzzy uh, uh, type fuzzy type Type two, I think. Okay, so it is taking some time. Yeah, this is a editor window, right? This is type two editor window, and here you can see that if you if you if you install so if you do something, it will not work. There is some problem with this one, right? So as he said that um, uh, Professor Mendel and he both are uh, suggested to the MATLAB. You can uh, MATLAB has actually a big team. They can work on it and they can resolve any type of problem. So they, I think, they have hand over to the, uh, the MATLAB in this case, right? So I can show you how to install. Uh, uh, where is the PPT? Okay, just a, just a minute. Okay. So this is a toolbox uh, I have downloaded from the, uh, there only and here you can see that all the information regarding this toolbox is given here. This is the manual. So this is the manual if you download that particular software from to fund sir page or from directly from the math work you will get that particular file right so here you can see that this is the installation procedure first download and extract the rar file and then export in matlab by uh, matlab path tool command navigate directly to you, ex, uh, you just extract it into a down below the, this is just a simple uh, way, right? And rest of the things is given here. These are the coding part is mentioned by the Tufan so itself, right? This is your, uh, the reading in, in case of type one, you are simply using read function, but here you have to use read T2FIS. And in, in previous case, it is read FIS. So simple modification they have done. These are the TR method, that is type reduction method. He discussed about Karnak Mendel, uh, and this is again EKM. So different type of reduction method is, uh, is also available in this particular toolbox. And these methods are inspired from the uh, defugification process, that like a centroid, right? These type of defugication process. And the, an another function, evaluate. In case of type one, it is simple E B A L, but in case of type two, it is evaluate type two. So, right? So many things is given in toolbox. Uh, suppose if you have a toolbox, uh, download a toolbox from MathWork, you can simply go or go in path set path this location, click on once, and now you can add with subfolder. Go on set path again. I am showing you. Go on the set path, click once, and 
simple click add with folder right so all add with folders and now it will direct to your location you can simply go on that particular folder and and click all the folders right and open it and it will uh, so in this particular location right right and save it these are the procedure because we have already installed that particular toolbox so i'm not doing again right this is the procedure similarly you can do for the okay i think it is, it is installed here you can see that these are the things right so very simple way add with folder and save it add with folder and save it these are the options you can do and you can get the your type 2 toolbox in your matlab if you if you having a older version it is useful i think if you are having more after 2014 to 2019 a then it will work as per his suggestion okay clear thank you sir thank you sir thank you so uh, yes, now in half an hour half an hour we will try to discuss few things related to type 2 and type 1 fuzzy uh, it's a representation everything because uh, uh, the professor mendel instructed me to cover this portion so that's why we included that portion so what is the representation these these are the rep uh, first we'll talk about the representation and operation and inference operation is covered by the Professor Devasis Samantha uh, sir in first to first to today first two lecture right all the operation everything he has, he has, he covered in about type one here we will discuss about type two and rest of the part and next we will discuss fuzzy system then case study we will take one example by the professor uh, uh, Oscar Castillo which uh, which uh, I am writing one book with him right so this is the introductory part the everyone if you uh, listening all the talks everyone talk about jade right he is the first one who proposed uh, fuzzy logic and he also give the opinion about the type 2 also but he did not work a lot in that area professor mendel has worked a lot and all the research done by most of the research done by the professor mendel right Okay, so when we having a lot of uncertainties present in our system, input, output on the plant, on the different locations, then this technique will work properly. If we uh, type one most of the time is not performing well in terms of uncertainties, that's why type two comes in the picture, right? And that clear and one is also discussed about the uh, vagueness and uncertainties. So major challenges we are facing with type two is that computational complexity, right? That's why one of the participants is asked about why the, uh, the, the secondary membership grade is one. So because of the computational complexity, right? So uh, then Professor Mendel thought that why not make it? So he has given the name interval type two fuzzy logic controller that is IT2 FLS. The special case of type 2 FLS means when the secondary membership fun function, we, I will discuss what is the secondary membership function in detail, don't worry. Okay, that is special case of type 2 fuzzy logic. And next one is computational associate, computation associated with a very manageable means when we are fixing the secondary membership grade to one, then the managing things are very easier means the computational things are managing very is a very easy. Here you can see that one of the paper reported by Sukla, I mean Sukla and etc. by uh, uh, by the Southern Hampton uh, Southern University Delhi, a bibliometric overview of field of tie to fuzzy sets and system that is published in IEEE Computational Intelligence Magazine in 2020. That that is a recent paper. He discussed about 1997 to 2017. So here red line is showing about the total number of citation from these from this particular range 1997 to 2017. So here you can see that USA 
citing lot of paper that is around 25000 uk and that then here you can see that india so very less number of research is going on in field of type 2 especially type 2 in india and and countable number of papers are working this area right that's why uh, that's why i thought that we should arrange one talk, uh, one uh, fdp session on that particular special area because this is very specific area right so uh, this is main uh, motto for me uh, for this particular talk uh, fdp right so now we will talk about disadvantage why we are facing a problem with what what are the what are the exact problem with fuzzy logic right so as we see in a uh, many literature if you going through right the many improvement we observed in, in conventional fuzzy logic con controller over their conventional counterpart what is conventional conventional means pid the different conventional control techniques right but they are usually not effective in those cases where system to be controlled as system with uncertainty means if system has uncertainties in uh, in terms of environment in terms of uh, sensor data right so in that case this particular uh, uh, that in this particular uh, conventional fuzzy logic controller that is type 1 fuzzy logic controller fails in that case we are expecting new thing that is type 2 so what is the draw, what is the what exactly where we observing the uh, uncertainties that is five different type of uncertainties we observe in literature that is that again this is, this was given by the professor mendel only uncertainties in the input and you know that uncertainties in the input is observed like so if you familiar with control system that is your input that is reference input and this is your flc suppose the, here we are applying flc and this is your plan right so here you can see that this is your reference input right and this is your uh, uh, the feedback and you know that feedback is generally coming from the sensors right so sensors may be noisy and that noise data will be fed back to the reference and then error signal will be generated that error signal may be noisy because of sensor data and that uncertainty is known as uncertainty in the input and that uncertainty will be fed in flc if it is type one flc that they may not able to handle that properly that is the source of uncertainty we are observing in type one fuzzy logic system uncertainty is in the control output and means that is controller output you know that controller output is fed back to the any motor any uh, actuator so actuator may be uh, due to environmental condition or maybe something unha un uh, unhappening happened in that case they may be wear they may be tear off maybe some problem arises with the actuator in that case this flc may fail right another one is meaning of the words right if you remember the uh, nb Uh, that is negative, big, negative, small kind of things is discussed by uh, discussed in the previous lecture by the professor Mantas, right? Devasis, uh, professor Devasis. So these word means different for different people, right? That can also be handled by the type two uncertainties in the operating condition of controller means the condition. Suppose this controller, suppose one of the real application you have you have implemented drone. and it is working in some particular environment if time changes or it may be the summer it may be the winter the the the environmental condition may change and maybe the temperature uh, temperature change and maybe the atmospheric condition may change in that case that is also one kind of uncertainty and controller may fail and last one is tuning up parameter you know that the parameter tuning up flc uh, that is kp kd that uh, that uh, Yeah, Tufan sir is also discussing uh, discussing about the different type of PID structure, fuzzy PID structure. So these uh, the it has a scaling factor that is KP, KD, and output scaling factor, right? It has. So that tuning of the parameter, that tuning will be changed 
after the some time maybe if you suppose you have tuned some value kp to 10 and maybe some later uh, after some time it may be automatically it becomes 11 so that type of problem we also take care by type 2 but these are not take care by type 1 so that's why controller designer might end up wasting time by frequently tuning the conventional type 1 flc to cope with challenge uh, changeable environment right so if we are using the type 1 FNC, flc we have to again retune retune our uh, scaling factors are we can say that kpkd kind of values right and that is again we have to use our resources right if you uh, suppose if you have made some autonomous thing and and after some time it is not working properly because of tuning things then it is uh, our biggest drawback in that case right so right so this advanced this this type of problem will not be observed or less observed in case of type 2 that is the major uh, uh, i can say that major advantage of the uh, type 2 right so what is the type 2 now all the mentioned uncertainties are translated into the uncertainties about the fuzzy set means whatever uncertainties we observed that that will be translated in the membership function whatever the membership function we have it is translated in that particular membership and this membership function become for uh, that kind of uh, uncertainty and if you know that type 2 is itself a kind of thing right so membership function of type 2 are three dimensional and include fou that is that particular region is known as a footprint of uncertainties right so it is included by the type 2 itself that is known as a footprint of uncertainties that provides additional degree of freedom to model and handle uncertainty this is the advantage right so flc based on it2 fs will have potential to give better performance than type 1 flc with respect to uncertainty whatever i discussed this is same again one thing uh, the type 2 are characterized by fuzzy membership function here this is the fuzzy means the value is not fixed we will see through one diagram it it right don't, if you're not getting don't worry the membership grade for each element of these sets are fuzzy set in between 0 to 1 in case of type 1 where membership grade here uh, type in case of type 1 this is membership function and grade is simple one value if you drawing one line here so this is a one value that is known as a membership grade or crisp membership which is lying between 0 to one type two FLS is able to model more, more complex input output relationships than its type one counterpart and thus can give better control response means if we having a few complex relations in that case type two may give a better performance so if we talk about type one fuzzy set how what was the representation that we will see now this is the uh, this is the x membership function and where x belong, belong to universe of discourse capital x is known as a universe of discourse right type 1 fuzzy set x mu of x membership function is lying between 0 to 1 right and the representation is will be like that this is a membership gate mu a by x kind of structure it is right a a is a fuzzy set 0.2 by 1, 0.5 by 2, like that, right? This is the representation of type 1 fuzzy set, and this is the uh, the membership function, right? Here you can say that see that this is your membership function or membership grade, and this is your universe of discourse, right? If here you can see that these are the set value, so one, one, this is one, and it has value point, it has value around point two. Another value is 2, it has point, point 0.5. Similarly, 3, 4, 5. Right? So, in this way, we can represent our type 1 fuzzy set. Right? 
now uh, just a bit voice is not clear my voice is not clear so it is clear okay great okay so how to differentiate from type 1 fuzzy set to type 2 fuzzy set so this is your simple type 1 fuzzy set we have drawn one straight line perpendicular to x axis and it is cutting you can see it is cutting at one location that is one point only that is 0.8 right when we are feeding some uncertainties in that particular membership function we will get such type of structure again if we draw one line that is x dash in universe of discourse we will it will cut on in this region now you can see that this is varying from 0 0.6 to 0.1 right points sorry 0 0.6 to 1 this is now fuzzy initially it is a single value then it is crisp that is the difference this is a fuzzy that's why the membership function of type 2 fuzzy is itself a, means uh, itself a fuzzy the membership value that is primary membership what is primary this is a universal discourse this is a primary membership function and perpendicular to this particular axis is known as a secondary membership function we will see that right so now with this particular slide you will understand how we are representing this particular uh, type 2 in 3d space right so here you can see that so here you can see that x dash is drawn cutting in two locations that is membership this is a primary membership function you know that it is varying point uh, from 0.6 to 1 so here you can see this this is three dimensional membership function so type 1 is two dimensional type 2 is three dimensional membership, membership function because we have added one more dimension this is your primary and this is your secondary membership function right and this is your x x is i think you are familiar with x this is your universe sub discourse where we talking about the x here you can see that 0 0.6 so we have taken 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 and 1 right this value 0 0.6 that is 0.6 and 0 0.7 0 0.8 like that and in y axis it has some width that is represented by this particular secondary membership function so at 0.6 it it has it it having some value it may be around 0.4 we can see that 0.6 it uh, 0.6 so it uh, i think it is around 0.4 and it is around 0.6 uh, and it is around 1 near to the one and this is something right so this uh, upper uh, side right upper side uh, i can say that in y in the z axis we have these things right so secondary membership function is like that so here we, uh, we have got one uh, new dimension that is known as a secondary membership function and this is the representation in 3d dimensional right where suppose x is 3 uh, x is something 1 and y this is your y y is 0 means this is primary membership function and secondary member function is around 0.9 so this is your membership function the, here we uh, here we are talking about point only that's why the line is drawn right so here you can see that how to represent in fuzzy set way 
So first we are representing the membership grade that is secondary membership function. This is secondary. First we are taking secondary. Second one we are taking primary that is mu and x is the, this is your x. x is it means this uh, particular uh, universe of discourse where we are talking about the x. So I, I, mu i is function of x, right? And simple mu is function of x and as well as mu. I hope this portion is clear to you. So means this primary membership function is, is function of x and this secondary membership function is a function of this particular and this particular means x and mu. What is mu? Mu is the primary membership grade in, if, if it is fixed value. And the representation can be seen by this particular graph. This is one, one. Here, primary membership function is zero. So zero and this is around 0.9, this value. So it is 0.9. So this is the representation of this particular, right? Similarly, this is the representation of uh, two. That is two. So here you can see that this is two and this is your primary 0.4 and secondary will be around 0.3 this this height is 0.3 right and this height is 0.4 similarly we can represent for 3 4 and 5 also right this is the representation of fuzzy, uh, type 2 fuzzy set and this is a wave slice representation right so we can cal calculate number of wave slice by that particular formula. Here you can see that how to give the name. This is this upper side is known as a upper membership function. This lower side is known as a lower membership function. This is right. Th that's why it is name is upper membership function and this is a lower membership function. And in between upper and lower membership function, the region is known as a footprint of uncertainties where we talk about the uncertainties that is footprint okay so this is the representation if we talk about upper side then mu cap and it, it is the representation of lower membership function this is the representation upper side right so upper membership upper bound of, of, of fou represented by this lower bound of fou represented by this particular lower membership function. This is the representation. Whenever you are using like that mu a, like it is, it it means it is talking about upper membership function. If you are writing that slide, uh, that tilted sign upper any a b c d, this means we are talking about type two. If simple a, then it is talking about that is type two fuzzy set. That is type one fuzzy set this is simple representation right don't confuse with a cap uh, a uh, tactile sign and simple a right here we will talk about like that whenever you will go any type 2 literature you found that this this is the way we are representing the particular uh, section right now we will talk about complexity so if you remember the, uh, the, uh, professor tufan he discussed about the general type 2 fuzzy set general type 2 fuzzy set which become very computational complex right and that computational complexity uh, is reduced by making it interval but nowadays people are started working in general type 2 fuzzy or simple type 2 fuzzy if, if it is interval then then the secondary membership function become one then computation become easy that is the concept but these days very less paper very less amount of resource reported on the general type two if you if you seen uh, uh, the tufan and professor mendel has uh, published one paper around 2021 where he, they are talking about the uh, the general type two fuzzy set right so here you can see that uh, this is the introductory part. So we will discuss about interval. What is the difference between interval and type two?
फर्जी से राइट सो वट वी आर डूइंग वी आर मेकिंग इट बाई मेकिंग सेकेंडरी मेंबरशिप फंक्शन वन एंड देन इट बिकम क्वाइट प्रैक्टिकल because this uh, uh, because in initial phase of research the the computational uh, power of computer is very low in around 2000 and before that uh, most of the research proposed by professor mendel is around 1995 1995 uh, i think around 2000 or uh, before that right so that's why they talk about the interval what is interval here you can see that this is a x this is a primary and this is a secondary membership so this secondary membership function is make uh, is one means all the value of secondary membership function is one so what is the advantage of that that will give a lesser computational complexity in terms of computation right now also if we are going to use interval type to itself in uh, in uh, in in a computer it will take a time right when i am working on that particular area right it will take uh, when we are optimizing means we are optimizing the membership functions or when we are optimizing the scaling factor it is taking around 2 uh, to 3 3 days when we are simulating for 50 or 30 iterations right so it takes time right if you have a super computer then it may take lesser time right so interval type to phase can be represented by this particular expression where one the secondary membership function is one and rest of this is variable right and these are the representation x belongs to capital x means universe of discourse u belongs to the jx where jx is in between 0 to 1 only because you know that second uh, the that particular lying between 0 to 1 the secondary membership function uh, sorry primary membership function that membership function is lying between 0 to 1 that is the meaning so now we will discuss about uh, some union operation of type 2 so here you can see that if we have two fuzzy set that is a and b and this is your three dimensional membership function here we are represented in terms of two dimensional only y axis is 1 y x uh, sorry x this is u y and z axis is 1 means all the value uh, uh, all the values are set at 1 because the secondary membership function is 1 only in case of interval type to fuzzy right so that's why we are not representing it here and that is that uh, that makes uh, the the that particular concept is here here you can see that this is your one membership function this is another membership function now we will do the union operation you know that in case of union in case of type one also we are talking about the minima in both the membership function so this is the minima of upper membership function this is minima of sorry this is minima of lower membership function right so this was selected because this is this is the minimum and next one is upper upper this one is selected and finally this is the in between upper and lower and this is the final expression so that is the final picture pictorial representation union operation of a and b similarly this is the uh, mathematical expression you know the, the union operation is represented by that particular in in fuzzy if it is intersection operation then it is represented by that particular Okay, right next one is intersection operation so similarly we will get the intersection operation also right this is your intersection operation right you know the, uh, how in, in intersection we are taking the minimum of both the things right next one is uh, the complement one right so this is the complement operation of any fuzzy set that is a and mathematically it will be represented by 1 minus mu a x similarly this is for upper this is for lower membership upper this is for lower membership function and type reduction different way we can do the type reduction this is the one way 
where we are taking the, uh, the average of left and right. So this is a generalized uh, uh, representation of interval type 2 fuzzy logic system. Here, what is the major difference between type and type 2 is type reducer that is converting fuzzy type 2 fuzzy set in fuzzy one set by because this is Chris input is converted in fuzzy type 2 fuzzy right sorry type 2 fuzzy and again it is kind of, uh, these all the operation are in type 2 only at last because it in type it is in type 2 so we have to reduce in type 1 in order to apply the defuzzification process and you know you know that different defuzzification process are available in the literature that is center of gravity uh, and and and so on right so type reduction is used here uh, in order to make type uh, type 2 in type 1 by type reduction so karnik method uh, type reduction method, uh, methods are available you can use any one so now we'll see the Mamadani RTSK system. So here we are going to discuss about Mamadani. You know that in Mamadani case, when we are uh, Mamadani case is a, if x is a, y is b, then z will be g. That is uh, defined by a and b. We will see with one example. Okay. So this is uh, this is first rule. This is second rule, and this is your output, right? So here you can see that. If we draw one line perpendicular to x axis, that is cutting on lower and upper. Similarly, it is cutting on lower and upper. Similarly, y axis, sorry. Similarly, for the another fuzzy set, we are uh, taking one line perpendicular to the x axis that will cut around two points, right? So you know that we are uh, selecting the minima. Rule is that is star that is used for selecting the minima. So again, this and this upper will select the minima and this and this will select the minima finally these two lines are selected similarly uh, and if two lines are selected we are taking in between that is the rule and at last what we are doing we are adding both the things and it is final expression and it, that is your c left and cr according to c left and cr we will get the output okay so uh, this is all about the simple representation of uh, interval type to fuzzy system, right? And here we have done uh, simple representation, right? So different defuzzification stages are available like type reduction and defuzzification that we have seen, right? And membership grades are Chris number in case of uh, type one, but in case of this one it is type two. In case of type two it is Fuzzy member, fuzzy interval, fuzzy, right? So these are the application. Class, it can be used in classification controller. You have just seen in uh, the past lecture, function approximation, time series prediction, decision making, image processing. So biomedical signal processing everywhere. Most of the location now it is we are jumping in the deep learning. I ask, also ask one question. Actually, he has started working in this particular area. I have seen few papers. He just right so uh, now we are shifting fuzzy in deep learning neural network whatever neural network is already exhausted area in terms of uh, fuzzy and neural but in, in the if you are doing the fusion with the deep learning then it may give you better paper right so few students are my is working on that area still we are struggling with that one so this is all about today uh, session about me uh, on the fuzzy right so if you if you have uh, if you having any doubt anything let me know yes please if you having any questions regarding the presentation you can ask otherwise we will close our sessions
hello yes please yes sir i i wanted to ask about the ppts and videos uh, you wrote the, in the chat box that uh, all the session will be uploaded on the youtube channel yeah so when uh, when the all the session will be complete then uh, you will upload huh? we will try to upload uh, we will try it, uh, as soon as possible right yes because as, uh, uh, as, as, of, as of my technical team uh, have a time we can do right okay okay sir please do, do before the examination na uh, uh, you will take the exam uh, for the certificate na so that uh, it is my humble request sir because i am from the different background so i have to uh, learn and i am very interested in the fuzzy logic for the my research point of view yes yes thank you, sir. sure thank you sir thank you, you will try any other we'll try to upload as soon as possible because you know uh, uh, technical team is not under us we will just give the, all the details and they are so this is these are the uh, sorry this is the feedback link you can share with your you can share your feedback and one thing i want to say that feedback is just only for feedback only and attendance will be taken from the that particular uh, sessions right means web webex link so please be uh, on the webex link uh, while uh, uh, while the class is going on okay so any oh, other sir. yes please hello uh, yes, sir yes. i am ravi tripathi from triple it alabad Yes, yes. Sir. Uh, sir, actually, I am working on uh, uh, sensorless control using fuzzy logic controller and state estimator. Okay. Fuzzy, con fuzzy logic with uh, uh, fractional order Kalman filter. So, sir, uh, I had implemented ty type one fuzzy control, and uh, I am interested to implement type two with this estimators. Okay, sir. So, sir, can we work together? Yeah, sure. We can try. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank you. You can contact me uh, on the mail and on the phone number. There is no issue. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. If any uh, scope with type two, we can surely uh, try to implement it. Uh, any other questions will be welcome. Okay, I think uh, uh, there is no questions uh, from your side. So we will close today's session here only. And I hope uh, you people are learning a lot. And I would, uh, I would request everyone, please join the sessions for learning only, right? That will be helpful for you. If you learn anything from this uh, particular FDP, I think you can uh, wrote one paper, right? Usually you can write one paper, right? We are providing all the information related to uh, fuzzy and type two, right? If you're writing any paper in type two, I can guarantee that it, the chances of getting uh, uh, selection in general is very easy compared to the type one, a simple fuzzy, right? Very high chance to selection right so that uh, i think uh, you can try uh, in your research work okay so thank you everyone for joining today's session thank you